Hey, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co, and today I'm reviewing the Bamboo P1S 3D Printer. There's a few things to talk about before we dive into the actual review, my thoughts, opinions, experiences on this printer, but let's go ahead and talk about all those few things. Uh, number one, this is going to be a series of, I want to say, four videos, although there'll be continuous 3D printer coverage here and there on the channel. Uh, to cover that, the first video is going to be this video. I'm reviewing the Bamboo P1S, my entire experience with it. I've had it now for about five, maybe six weeks, and I'll tell you everything Thing I've learned along the way. Number two is there's going to be a separate video chronicling the troubles I've had with the printer and the walking through process around those. Effectively, to not overly bog down this review with a full timeline of the issues I've had, I'm going to put that in a separate video. This might be particularly helpful if you find yourself uh, as a Bamboo P1S owner and uh, find yourself going through any of the issues I've had and the steps I've taken to try to troubleshoot those, al troubleshoot those along the way. Make no mistake, I overall like this printer, spoiled through the review, we'll talk about it more shortly, but I have had issues with it and I want to kind of chronicle those in a separate video for any anyone new to 3D printing as I am myself. Well, I'm mostly new to that. We'll, we'll talk about that soon. So again, video number one is this review. Video number two is going to be a separate video chronicling the issues I've had, the steps I've taken to troubleshoot them, and where I am now, which is in a very good place. Uh, video number three is going to be a video around all the accessories I've printed specifically for the 3D printer, meaning things that make this a better device than it currently is, things that help in small different ways. I'll just be going through all the stuff I've, and not not just 3D printed, I'll be going through accessories I've purchased as well as 3D printed to overall enhance the 3D printing experience. And then video number four is going to be a video covering all the various gizmos and gadgets I've made so far, or a lot of the gizmos and gadgets. I think I've made too many to properly do all, but a lot of the gizmos and gadgets I've made so far, I'm going to be covering in a fourth video. Separately from that, on this channel, I do a monthly video already where I cover board game upgrades and deluxifications, and you'll probably see things that I've printed in this printer in that video. You'll probably see the occasional insert or uh, tokens or whatever it is that I've printed to improve the various gaming experience. Uh, so you'll see that spursed out through the deluxifications and upgrade series. So that's kind of a bit of an overview around the video content that's going to be around the Bamboo P1S. The second thing that's worth covering very intentionally, because this is not a cheap printer, is this is a review printer sent to me by Bamboo. It's one that I specifically sought out myself, so this is not a case where they emailed me and said, hey, would you like to cover this printer? Rather, I know a bunch of people who have this printer and are very happy with it, and I reached out to them and asked them if they were interested in a review, and they were, so uh, it is one that I hunted down myself and tried to find this specific printer, uh, but it is a review copy, so take that bias into account, because this is not a cheap printer. We're going to cover that as part of the downside of this printer. It's definitely not cheap. There are far more expensive printers out there, but there's also far cheaper printers, and so that's something you want to take into account. And then fourthly, or thirdly, I don't know what number we're up to over here, I should say that there'll also be a uh, referral link to purchase this printer down below. Meaning it is a referral link, so if you do buy the printer, I will get a, you know, a kickback from that. So take that into account as well, because obviously something like that can bias a review towards the positive. Make no mistake, I am very happy with this printer and will tell you that, but that is something that is a bias you want to take into account. There is a referral link down below. So that's the, uh, I guess the biases at play are it's a free printer and it's a referral link. Past that, no money trade in hands of any kind. So let's go ahead and talk about my experience with this. It is mostly a positive experience, but I am going to walk through the general issues I had. And like I said, I'll have a full video around those issues and how I approach them. But let's start by telling you about my experience with 3D printers until now. You see, this is not my first 3D printer, but I only have two to judge it off. So if you're looking for a channel that has experience with 17 different printers and can tell you the pros and cons of each one, I'm not that channel. I can tell you my experience with the Ender 3 Pro. I think the Ender 3 V2 Pro, if I'm not mistaken. That's the first printer I got. I got it around three years ago, and I, I, I very quickly went to start printing some gizmos and gadgets. I printed one or two things and then started work on a Lost Wounds of Arnak insert, a very, very pretty Lost Wounds of Arnak insert. And I never finished that insert. I printed a few trays here and there. I never was able to successfully finish that insert. And then the occasional times over the next three years, occasionally I would try to go back to 3D printing and always have it not work out for me. So my Ender, my Ender 3 Pro, was frankly a complete waste of money. It was not a cheap printer. It's cheaper than this, make no mistake, but it's not a cheap tool for something that I bought, I fiddled with, I troubleshooted. My issue I had at the time, I had a bunch of issues, but the main issue I had was uh, prints sticking to the build plate. I had a lot of issues with that. I tried everything from glue. And this is something where you might be getting, depending on your own knowledge of 3D printers, there's a lot of things to know about. But the general idea is you're going to have a printer. You're going to have the various filaments. In this case, we have an AMS over here, which is something we'll talk about soon. 
but you're going to be feeding filament through the printer, through the nozzle, onto what is a build plate, which is in here. This is an enclosed printer, so we have our build plate over here, and then you're going to have, well, different options for build plates. This is a PEI smooth build plate. The uh, default printer comes with a rough build plate. There's different benefits and pros and cons to them. Both are totally fine, though. And my initial issues with the Ender was I couldn't get my prints to properly, flatly stick to it. I did a lot of troubleshooting around it. I kept on going to the various forums. I did everything I could possibly think of on my own, you know, very novice-based approach, and I never was able to properly solve the issue. I even went out, and bought, went out and bought custom springs. There's a whole process of leveling the printer. There's a car to go around the corners. This is stuff that some of you might know about already, the concepts of, and some of you have no idea what I'm talking about. But the main takeaway is I don't think of myself as somebody who is uh, technologically... I don't think of myself as a technological novice. I think I can usually power through with research and, you know, trying to find out what to do, ways to fix or improve things. I didn't just buy the Ender and then proceed to not ever try anything. I bought the Ender, tried troubleshooting things, and never was able to get a proper level of adhesion where I could comfortably rely that the eight-hour print I was about to run wasn't going to fail in the middle. I bought various things such as, you know, I, I bought um, smart switches so I could turn the printer off remotely, smart cameras so I could monitor the printing when I was in another location. I did all the various things I possibly could and couldn't get a consistently good experience. It proved to be something that was more trouble than it was worth, despite thinking that 3D printing was very, very cool, and the few times I would get a usable functional print, I was blown away by the fact that you were printing is something like that in your own house. I mean, it's insane. Like I have this little manta ray over here, this little articulated manta ray, little adorable guy. I love this guy. He's cute. He's fun. I have my rainbow 3D printed dragon in a blue, I think it's a blue, red, blue, red, yellow. I believe it's a blue, red, yellow silk, uh, you know, uh, filament over here. And I got this little articulated dragon. That's very cool. I have my dummy 13 and we'll talk more about these stuff in my full video showing you all the various stuff. And of course it's a board game channel over here. I also have my little insert for things and rings over here. Beautiful print insert printed in a, a marble, a red marble color from bamboo labs. So these are just a handful of things I printed, but these are all things you've printed in your own house, which is insane. But the ender did not get me there, unfortunately. So I always was interested in it. Uh, my most recent batch of trying to get back into it was maybe eight weeks ago or something like that. I took out the Ender, tried setting it up again. I was like, you know what? I really want to make use of this printer. It's so cool, the stuff you could make. And once again, I was stuck with issues and issues and issues, and I was not getting things properly printed. It just wasn't working. Things were stringing. There was just like so many issues with the printer. Nothing was sticking. I just had way too many issues, and I uh, decided to go ahead and just, um, well, not use the ender anymore it was just too frustrating of an experience that's when my uh, search for a new printer started and i reached i started looking into the bamboo lab the bamboo p1s specifically because i have friends who have this printer and they've had great experiences with it the biggest thing about this printer the claim to fame is the idea that it takes away a lot of the things that you have to do on your own to make sure a regular printer runs smoothly. The pitch of the Bamboo Labs is that, the Bamboo line of printers, is that they do that for you. They have the A1 Mini, a smaller, more affordable printer that's not an enclosed printer. You do not need an enclosed printer. It depends what kind of printer materials you're using. But for a basic novice, you do not need something of this level. The, uh, the A1 should, in theory, handle your needs. But again, keep in mind, my experience is only with this one, not with the A1. So some of the upgrades around this printer are nice to have. Some of them are essential if you're using certain printing materials, but this is the experience I have over here. But the idea that you are getting a, an experience that would simply take everything out of your hands for you, the most basic of which is auto-leveling. Uh, auto-leveling a printer is going in, in, on the ender. You'd have to go to each corner using a little tool to properly get the distance measured. This takes care of stuff like that for you. It's also specifically, uh, what's the word for it, uh, tailored or they have the various... Uh, uh, it's adjusted specifically to the Bamboo Labs filament as well. So if you use their filament coming in, you don't have to tweak with any settings because everything is tweaked around those settings. So effectively they have a lot, they have a line of printers, but also a line of filament and everything is tweaked around that filament. So if you use their filament, you know you're having an easier experience out of the box, or at least you should have an easier experience out of the box. So overall, it promises this ease of use experience, but it's not cheap. The Ender Pro when I bought it was probably around $250. I think you can get them now for around $150. But the Ender Pro when I got it was around $250. And this printer over here is coming in, I believe, at $600, if I'm not mistaken, and $850 if you want the AMS, which I definitely recommend. You don't need it to start printing. In fact, you could definitely start without it if you want to save yourself that money. But there are a lot of reasons why this is a nice quality of life thing to have, which we'll talk about soon. But effectively, it's $600 or $850 to get this, which is certainly much more expensive than the $250 for the Ender Pro that I paid. So I'm paying a lot more, 
did I get a better experience out of it? And again, to be clear, I didn't pay a lot more. You'd be paying a lot more. And do you get a better experience out of it? And so that I'm going to talk about my initial experience with it starting off and setting it, setting it up. Uh, basically, I got the printer. It showed up in a big giant box. I unboxed it. And uh, within 45 minutes, I was printing my first thing. Uh, because effectively, I had to go out and follow some instructions, clip some various wires on the back. Nothing too crazy. But I had to just get it set up. Uh, following their steps was pretty straightforward. The only issue I had at first was uh, connecting the Wi-Fi. I had a little bit of an issue with. But I came back a little bit later and was able to successfully do it. Not a ton of problems. I don't know exactly what the issue was the first time around. But the first time around, I couldn't connect the Wi-Fi, I started printing without that, and then later I came back after the first print and connected the Wi-Fi, ran some updates and all that, but the whole entire experience from starting the box to uh, where you get ready to print printing, it was roughly 45 minutes for me. I think they claim 15 to 30 minutes if I'm not mistaken. I'm sure you could do that if you're really quick. I want to take my time and be sure that I was doing things. I would say 15 is probably way too ambitious. You could probably do it in 30. For me, it's around 45 minutes to get started. From there, the next five days were absolutely incredible. Incredible. I mean, in the sense that, again, I'm coming at this from somebody who always wanted to 3D print things and had issue after issue trying to successfully get it done. And everything I printed in those first five days with the bamboo, everything I printed just came out crisp, clean, no issues. This was you hit go and you're done. And again, my experience with the Ender Pro was I often had to do things on a slice on my computer, put on a little micro SD card, walk over to the printer and then fiddle around with the menu. All these things were just additional levels of of, of friction between wanting to print something and printing something. The Bamboo Labs, once you get that Wi-Fi set up and connects to your computer, connects to your phone, you can just hit print. You can have a model on Maker World that's gonna be Bamboo Lab site. So you can just go ahead and grab a, a model on Maker World, just hit print directly from there, and it'll just print directly. You don't have to fiddle around with anything. You just hit print from your phone and you're good to go. Or alternatively, if you get a uh, STL or uh, you know if you get any sort of 3D printer files, a 3MF, an STL, if you get them all those, and you go ahead and throw them into Bamboo Slicer, you can print again directly from your computer. So you don't, you're not limited to files in Maker World. You never really have to ever, I don't think I've ever removed the SD card on this printer. It still is in there. It still has whatever's on that initial loaded SD card. I've always been printing from my phone or my computer without ever having to go back and forth. And that is a huge quality of life benefit. The fact that everything I printed in those first five days was incredibly easy. I hit print and it printed. That was all there was to it. There was nothing to go ahead and fiddle with. There's nothing to do or mess around. There's no leveling. There were no mess ups. There were just five days of beautiful prints. And if you're like, hey, Alex, I think you said you had this printer for around five, six weeks. Why are you saying there were five days of beautiful prints? It's because after five days, I ran to my first issue. And my first issue, again, this will be chronically, chron chronicled more heavily in a separate video, but my first issue was a failed print that halfway through the print, everything started flying around and spaghettiing. Spaghettiing is often the term when the filament is no longer connecting. Usually it's because of an adhesion issue. There could be other reasons, but usually if the thing that's being printed has an adhesion issue and it no longer sticks in place, then that thing will move. And if that thing moves, then now your 3D printer nozzle is printing to where the thing is supposed to be and not where it is. And that can result in a slow string of filament coming out and hardening, not where it's supposed to be, but in midair, and then from there starting to scatter and spaghetti everything on the plate. It can cause a basically a small snafu to become a very large snafu very quickly. Now, that started happening, that kind of stuff. In fact, several things started happening. I will be going with this in a full separate video because it was very hard. To this day, I still don't know the main source of the issues or which thing fixed it. I just know that I went through four or five days of incredible frustration with the printer and then managed to eventually solve all my issues and get back to a place of Zen, which I had one issue since then as well. Again, I'll talk about this in a video, but for the most part, it's been smooth sailing outside of that. Now, this is very, very important because the Bamboo Labs experience is supposed to be a no issues kind of experience. And I don't think I can guarantee that. And, and well, I, no, I don't think. I know I can't guarantee that based on my own experience with this printer. There were issues. Issues that I checked with some of my friends who had this printer and they were not having any of those. So maybe it's unique to me, but it's not totally unique to me because like I said, I consider myself tech savvy enough. I went on forums. I found other people had issues. There are people who have had issues with bamboo printers. I apparently was one of them in terms of the multiple issues I was having where after five days of great prints with no issues, I then experienced four or five days of every other print failing. I once again got another camera to set it up. This, I should know, does come with a camera. The camera inside this is, in my opinion, not great. It has issues with constantly connecting. And then when it does connect, the frame rate is terrible. It's a functional camera. If you want to get a sense of whether your print is failing or not, you can plug it, you just open up your app, hit, hit 
play and most of the time you can go ahead and get some footage that will tell you whether your print is failing. But the camera in here, I wish it was better. It's not. I'll be talking about the, my accessory video, some of the things I've done. I'll be showing you what I've done for a camera setup instead. But again, ultimately, that's an easy fix to get better footage. But in the meantime, I started setting that up once I started having these issues because I started doing everything I could under the sun to fix these issues. Once I did so, I got back to a place where the printer was excellent and amazing for the next, you know, three weeks straight before I ran into another issue. And that issue was fairly quick to solve. Again, troubleshooting steps, you go through a few things and you're good to go. So overall, my experience with this printer through hundreds of hours of printing by now, I have printed inserts and toys and inserts and toys and inserts and toys, mostly just inserts and toys, honestly. But I have printed a lot of things with this printer. It has been running nearly nonstop. Oh no, issues, toys, and accessories for the printer, third category. I've been printing nearly nonstop now for five, six weeks. I say nearly nonstop because it, it does stop occasionally. Uh, doing those four or five days where I was having issues, I did not do overnight prints. But in general, I do overnight prints and have no issues with them. So for the most part, I've had a very, very smooth experience of nearly nonstop printing four or five weeks past having something go wrong five days in that eventually I fixed, but I'm still not entirely sure how. Again, I will chronicle that in a separate video if you want the full, what did I go through? What do I think caused it? How do I think I addressed it? All of that. I should note, and it is worth noting this, I have used not just Bamboo Labs filaments, meaning I've used primarily, well, I wouldn't even say primarily, I would say I started off with Bamboo Labs filaments, but I've definitely messed around with non-Bamboo Labs filaments, and it's entirely possible that those contributed to the issues. I don't know. I, again, at the end of the day, I just don't know, and I'll, I'll explain in that other video the more of the, what I think and all that, but it's just worth noting here that some of my friends who have not had any issues have used exclusively Bamboo Labs filament, so it is possible that going outside their ecosystem caused some of the issues, I'm still happy I did because having done so and now used and found other cheaper filaments, I still use Bamboo Labs for some of the filaments, especially for the more premium ones. But if I want some basic filaments, I do use other brands, primarily uh, Sunlu, uh, King Rune, and I want to say Sunlu, King Rune, and Elegoo. Sunlu, King Rune, and Elegoo I have used for other reliably community approved filaments that they generally have had good, good uh, results with. And I've managed to get good results with, with tweaking some settings. So I do believe you can go ahead and use other cheaper filaments. You will potentially start to mess around with some degree of tweaking. So if your goal is the most streamlined, smooth experience possible, definitely start with Bamboo Labs only filament and stick with theirs initially. It might cost you a little bit more, but not significantly more, especially if you buy things on sale and you just won't have to mess around with settings. That said, if you're printing a lot, it might be worth eventually trying to do other filaments, but I, I would definitely, if you're not a someone who wants to deal with issues, start off with Bamboo Labs filament only, because especially if you do have issues, you can localize it to that closed ecosystem as opposed to wondering where something went wrong. So overall, I've had an excellent experience with this printer where things just print. It is a source of Joy might be the wrong word, but it is a source of joy of the idea that you can just sit there and 3D print whatever toys you want and have access to toys at any given point, whether it's fun things that you want to play with, whether it's nice decorative pieces. I've also printed, I guess, more than accessories. I have like a, a beautiful little 3D printed uh, holder. I'll show you this stuff in more other videos. I'll show you more of the things I've printed, but I have enjoyed a lot of different things that are just nice little toys and quality life additions to my life. In addition to the main reason I got this, which is 3D printing inserts for board games. The idea that you can go ahead and find community inserts online and print uh, you know, whatever it is you want for whatever games you have and not have to go out and spend, you know, 30 to $50 on any single insert at any given point. You instead can spend a few dollars on the filament and just have this printer. It will pay for itself in the long term, but definitely not in the short term. In the short term, this is something that is almost certainly a toy that it will take a while before you see your investment repaid if you are a 3D printed insert kind of person. So overall, in comparison to the Ender, which is my only other printer, this has been an absolute joy, but not a joy without any issues at all. There are issues and I've had to troubleshoot them, but I, what, I was able to, and it also helped that I had five days of printing whatever I want with no issues, which I never really had with any other printer. And so I was able to see the promise that this, this, that this printer has once you get past some of the things. So my overall experience with the Bamboo is that this is a, not a cheap printer by any means, but it does the job. And it does the job by taking as much 
of the fiddling and details out of your hands to the point that depending on what you try to do, you may not need to fiddle with anything. I think if you stick to Bamboo Labs filament only, you may never have to tweak a single thing. If you do want to go ahead and branch out, you may have to tweak a little bit. And there may be issues. You may have issues you need to troubleshoot. That's certainly something that might happen. It has been my experience, but at least I was able to do so, get past that, and go back to nearly non-stop printing with this printer. And again, if you want a full chronicle of the issues, the things I've done, stuff that's happened along the way, uh, check out my other video for a full breakdown of those issues. So overall, I definitely recommend the Bamboo printer, if the Bamboo P1S specifically, if you are someone who's willing to shell out the money, that money is worth it to you, and you're looking for a printing experience that will mostly take the fiddling out of your hands. It is not a perfect experience, at least my experience has not been, but it has been a, a breeze, a breeze compared to previous 3D printer experiences. As far as some other things worth mentioning, as part of this review or whatnot, is the AMS. Uh, this is basically going to help you feed four separate spools into your printer, which allows for two things. One is the quality of life of not having to switch a spool every single time you want to switch a color. You can have up to four colors in here. So for example, it's particular in my use case over here, I almost always have a basic black filament lined up here for whatever basic black things that I'm doing, which are very often inserts, are my inserts I find I use a basic black filament, nothing too crazy. So I almost always have that lined up in here for the basic stuff. But then from there, I can have three other filaments lined up to mix and match for whatever kind of convenience I want. So you don't have to constantly switch your filament and it'll make switching filaments a lot easier in general. It also allows you to do multicolored prints. Effectively, multicolored prints are when you go ahead, and this is not a multicolored print, this is a print using a single filament that is multicolored. A multicolored print is something like this, where you can see the eyes are actually a different color than the body, and that was not painted. You could paint that. In fact, probably should with this, which we'll talk about in a second. But rather, the multicolored prints are going to the multicolor prints are where the, the filament feeder, the AMS is feeding multi, multiple colors into air. So as it prints, it can switch colors. Now that comes with a downside, by the way. I should note there's a downside to multicolor prints where it can waste a lot of filaments. Uh, affection, affectionately called filament poops. They come out of the back of the filament. Uh, there's a little thing you can print for that. We'll show you in another video. But effectively, the little every time, they, every time the AMS switches colors, there's a degree of processing where you print out extra filament to avoid color bleed. There's ways to tweak that. There was ways to improve that. Uh, I'll try to link to some videos down below that will help with that, with ways to mess around with that. I kind of stick to not using multicolor prints as much as possible to minimize that poop wastage, but there are certainly times I do so, and it's nice to have that option. Very often you're looking at the difference between a print that might be like, you know, well, I guess everything's such, I don't want to give examples there because it is very different. Some multicolor prints will use four times the filament because you're going multicolor, and some will use an extra 20%. It very much depends on the nature of the print. Something like this, where you're only having a small top layer in black, this wastes very little filament to print it in two colors. Versus if you have lines sliced out through the entire thing, you can waste tons and tons of filament and extend the printing time an absolute ton. Multi Multicolor prints are a nice quality of life feature, but they are something that comes at a cost and you should know those costs, both in terms of times and filament, before you start engaging too heavily in them. That said, having the ability to have this over here, definitely a very nice quality of life addition, as opposed to just having a single filament spool that you have to constantly switch out. Like I said already, in terms of other filaments, I, I've primarily been using uh, Bamboo Labs as my main filament, and then using Sun Lu, King Rune, and Elagoon as my various other filaments from other companies. I specifically wanted to try other companies, both because they have other things that they have different things that they're better at or worse. But overall, I've been using those three companies. I think primarily Sun Lu, but all those three companies have been my attempt to try other filaments at slight, slightly cheaper price points to be able to experience the different options out there. I should also note there are other accessories you can get. I'll be covering that more in a separate video, but that's overall the ecosystem of things that I've been using. There's entire videos you can do on the nature of PLA versus PETG versus any other, uh, you know, AS, I think ASA if I'm not mistaken, I have to remember the various terminologies, but there's a lot of filament types out there. If you are someone who's starting off with 3D printing, I definitely recommend starting with PLA. Uh, very quickly from there, there's ways you can branch out, but start with PLA. Uh, PLA in general is gonna be one of the most common filaments. There's pros and cons to everything but start there just because it is the most common. That also means you'll have the most ability to troubleshoot those things. From there, you can switch to Petchy to try out different things. Petchy has some benefits, some uh, you know increased heat resistance, a little more flexibility and a little less firmness overall, uh, but also has some more issues with adhesion and possible stringing. So there are pros and cons. Stringing is when you have, well, there's all kinds of 
all kinds of things to learn about in the 3D printing ecosystem, but stringiness very often we have little fluffs of stringiness as the printer head moves around different areas. Uh, very often there's things you can do to fix that. You can draw your filaments. That's a whole, we'll talk about that more in the troubleshooting because it's something I've learned and I've been doing. There's nature stuff of the ways to store filaments. I'll talk about that as well because I have entire dry box systems of the ways to store filaments. 3D printing can be a side passing hobby, but if you're going to buy a machine like this, it's probably gonna become almost a full-time hobby. There's a full-time joy of finding new things to print for the printer itself, of finding things to go ahead and just build for the sake of having a toy factor, of finding things that add to the quality of your life overall. There's full ecosystems of things you can do with the 3D printer, and it can be very, very, very immersive, but also incredibly fun and incredibly satisfying. So, to recap, There'll be several other videos if you want more information about different aspects of the printer. But if you are looking for whether I've had a good experience with this, the answer is an easy yes. I have been loving this printer. It has been printing nearly nonstop. The four or five days where I couldn't figure out how to fix the inconsistent failures that I was having, that was incredibly miserable. So if you're going to buy this printer, understand that you may still have frustrations. And I got flashbacks from the originally trying to get a 3D printer to work and having so many issues with it. And so I definitely will not in any way tell you that this is a perfect experience, but it's one that I definitely enjoy. And if you like the concept of being able to print whatever toys you want or inserts for that matter, or accessories or anything, this is a printer I would recommend. This is absolutely a printer I would recommend. In any case, and until next time, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. Hope you enjoyed this video, and as always, I hope you have a good one.